jam, baby. Oh boy. This vineyard is where the original, okay. the very first and then there's vineyard little, designated there's Grenache one. in, or sorry, variety, single variety labeled Grenache in California yeah, came from this vineyard in the late 1960s by David there's, Bruce there's Winery. And all the rest of the Grenache okay. blocks are yeah. dead now. So, but it's fun that there's like one, one remnant survivor vine. Okay. But, you can tell. but this is mainly yeah. carrying on in here. Oh no, there's another Grenache right there. That's even more photogenic. I had a nice cool morning though. Oh man, star thistle. It's the worst weed. Just throwing off random random bits of knowledge. That star that star thistle. It's fun to see the signs being broadcast throughout the state. Santa Clara County. The thing is, is I'm wondering too, like when this fence ends, if there's a way that you bend back around. Um, but yeah, based on um, Google Earth, it's like on the other side of the creek from this vineyard that, wow, that's all, that's mite damage too in there. I'm just trying to get, I, I'm pretty sure it's right back here. It's like there's two succinct ones. Yeah. But I'm just not quite sure just can't quite see it. Like in that, you can see it down there, but that looks almost too modern. It looks too tightly yeah. spaced. Yeah, that's not all of it. So, yeah. Just like parts of Mendocino, there are certain dirt roads I don't want to drive down at. Exactly. So, without an invita express invitation. Okay, cool. Well, we'll figure it out. All right. Um, to end the go. Yeah, so we, it was Rose of Peru at hers. Oh, okay. Um, and then we forgot that in here we found Malbec. Yes, we did find old Malbec cool. in here. It's that really dark green one. Yeah. That's not Cabernet. That's not, because it's Cabernet and the, no, the Malbec looked like that. I forgot what we called it as first, but. Oh, I know what you're, yeah. It was like, it's kind of glossy dark green. 
is it this? Yeah, probably. I think it's this. Yeah. It's just a dark. It almost. I think we were saying that it, it almost looked like uncenturiated centuria. Yeah. So Matt, it's uh, like a hundred-year-old Malbec vine. Which also kind of makes sense when you figure that's with pepper. Yeah. Considering it's originally yeah. from Cahors. So, totally. you know, another Southwest, Southwest France variety. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's beautiful. So, but basically it's just all this young Zin down. And then there's some over to the left there too. So I know Turley's taking some, and we've traditionally gotten six, seven tons, but it sounds like we can maybe do a little more than that this year. Nice. It's our first time down here this year, just because of all the COVID and smoke stuff. So it's, uh, um, we're just getting down here. So we're doing baseline samples of all four things that we get from this ranch. So we get a little bit of the old vine uh, Cabernet Pfeffer, a little bit of the um, old vine Zinfandel, and then we're gonna get some young vine Zinfandel this year um, to maybe make up for some fruit we're gonna lose to sm smoke taint. And then um, there's a couple big blocks of really beautiful old 1920 planted Mataro that we also get some. And the old blocks all make the ends heritage wine here. And this place is just to completely unique because all the wine vines are own rooted, it's super remote in this canyon. Um, and uh, the soils are all sort of limestone and granite derived. So they're very, very sandy. Um, so it's a, it's a special place. Every time you come here, I'm just like, who on earth in 1920 decided to plant Zinfandel, Cabernet Pfeffer, and Mataro here? It's like, it's completely improbable, but absolutely amazing. So it's pretty heavy. Yeah, there's definitely some fruit here. Let's see if we've got the... Matt was asking to find a classic Zinfandel cluster. <clears throat> Here's a classic Zinfandel cluster. You know, full berries that, uh, you know, aren't necessarily full of sugar. <clears throat> but then you get these um, berries that are already shriveling or dimpled. Uh, this is a little accelerated than compared to normal. And sometimes you'll have a little bit of red, red fruit on the shoulder. Um, but it's sort of like what makes <clears throat> Zinfandel tricky to pick because uh, these guys will all continue to release sugar um, in tank as uh, fermentation warms up um, and they're settled into an aqueous solution. Um, so definitely can make for a little bit of a challenge. These are sweet. They're starting to taste really good. Is that a big influence on like wine style too? Well, the, if you pick sweet, the sweeter you pick, the more raisins you have. So let's say you are already picking at 25 bricks. <clears throat> what happens in tank is these raisins continue to release sugar. And that means that they all continue to soak up. So that means that like, if you pick it at like 25 and a half or something like that, it could very well actually finish at like 27 and a half or 28 in tank, which is like, I need mean, could do this. It's like 17 and a half or 18% potential alcohol, which then means you have to add water to the tank because there's no way you can successfully really complete a fermentation to 18% alcohol. Um, so that's the thing is like, when you samples in, typically if you're picking it in the 23s, it's still gonna soak up and you're still gonna have a solid like, you know, 14 plus percent alcohol wine. That's why it's very hard to make like low alcohols in. Um, and, and also it's the, uh, and frankly, sometimes you need a few raisins to get the, the majority of the fruit ripe so if you really are just trying to make Zinfandel that's predicated on making it low alcohol, you're probably gonna make underripe Zinfandel. So it's a, it's a very tricky line to draw. And certain varieties, certain selections of uh, Zin tend to have more of this um, or less of this. We're seeing definitely more of it in 2020 though, given the, the heat events and everything. So um, yeah, but it's definitely what makes Zinfandel a little bit of a challenge. It's literally like the Cabernet winemaker's nightmare because uh, it's just completely ununiform. And then you throw in the fact that you have a bunch of other varieties in these blocks that may be ahead or behind and uh, you just have to kind of embrace the chaos a little bit. Tastes great though. So how does it look? It looks good. I mean, it's always funny. So they basket prune here, so they get this very compressed fruit zone. And so it looks like the vines are very heavily cropped um, and they're not actually as heavily cropped as they look, they, I think, but at the same time, the fruit kind of bunches up and balls, but the vines are super, super healthy. Um, 
And so as long as the canopies stay up and handle it, you know, things should get ripe. Um, don't see a lot of virus expression here. Um, there's a little bit here and there, but um, they're very healthy vines. I think just because it's so remote here, the, um, you know, there's just less pressure coming in. There's less, you know, if you're surrounded by other vineyards that might have, you know, trunk disease pressure or uh, mildew pressure, you know, that stuff's going to blow into your vineyard. But because we're essentially isolated in the back of a canyon out here, these vines really haven't had too much that's going to like blow in and affect them. So it's, um, you know, they're sort of been held in a little bit of a vacuum out here for a long time, which is pretty amazing. So, I mean, the fact that you know, you have pretty vigorous, happy uh, Mataro here. And, you know, these signs are planted in 1920, I think. So, I mean, like 100 years old, which is pretty crazy. And on their own roots, which is always helpful too, because the soils are sandy enough. It's interesting to see though with the lime in the soils, the pHs here stay really low. This is, and the heritage one usually is based around the Mataro, the more red, and it definitely, I think, is the most sort of bandol-esque um, wine we make because of the limestone soils, the lime in the soils. Sarah, do you want to... Uh, like, find some rocks? Yeah, find some rocks. You want to talk about some rocks? <laughs> um, maybe. This, is, this looks like granite to me, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I still haven't gotten my According to the resident <laughs> geologist, I'm, I'm right. <laughs> Where's Casey? He's a geologist too. Oh, that's right. There's a lot of quartz in there. The white is like probably a feldspar. Yeah. Because the red stuff comes from, is K felds. No, the white stuff yeah. is K feldspar. Uh, no, the red, the pink one is K. The pink one is yeah. K and then this is not K. Yeah. yeah. And that would have made it be, yeah, that would have been more yeah. explosive. Fresh off our minerals. I was going to say, <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> well, this is officially the nerdiest conversation <laughs> that Matt has ever filmed. Yeah. So this is fantastic. And that's saying something. I'm like, I like that I'm not the only one. Yeah, no, it's yeah, amazing. It's 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 got the repartee, because normally I'm just like, and this is a rock. <laughs> <laughs> now, please talk to me. So. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I think I, I think what tasted and looked kind of like that Concord. Would there be Concord in here? Oh, yeah, there could be like a Labrusca or something Maybe. like that. Maybe it like definitely had that like that, that, that. Sub skinny. Oh, Sub -skinny. Weird. It does kind of look like Pallerson as well. I think it looks more like Magret, honestly. Because mm -hmm. the also the large round ovoid berries. Yeah. And very recumbent, granted. And low, low tannin. And okay. Yeah. It's kinda, it's a little sweeter too. Yeah. Granted, everything is recumbent at this vineyard. Some alicante there. Okay. Oh yeah, what we got? Mission. Yeah, mission. Yacht. Other young younger mission? trained up old roots, maybe. Yeah. Some Listam Prieto or some Priola Chica. Um, yeah, I got the Palomino. I mean, they might need this to lower the acidity here, just like an Evangelo. So, how can you tell this one's Palomino? White. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like carignan, but it's white, and then you see that's like, a that's a productive comment. <laughs> the the petioles are a different color. Yeah, very. I mean, very robust uh, grower. Typically, huge clusters, and then, then the main thing about it too is the um, berries are oblate, which is very is kind of strange. Zin's oblate too, where basically the um, circumference of the berry is wider than the overall length of the berry. So, like a lot of Rhone varieties tend to be. Um, Ovoid, so like more spread out and oval. So these guys are just oblate. Um, and also, it used to be called the other name for it tradition in California is golden chasteless. And when you see where they have sun exposed fruit, the fruit yeah, actually turns like quite, quite golden, um, which is kind of cool. But now is the ideal time to map because uh, grapes have turned color, but hopefully, it's not so late that there's not too much virus manifestation, which can really throw things. So like it would be ideal to map like in the mornings under fog. So like everything kind of looks the same um, or at least consistent. Um, so yeah, this would, this is the ideal time because um, you also have full sort of an idea of how the grapes are. So here's Mataro, for instance, that has an ovoid berry. You know, we're talking about Palomino has a, a oblate. Um, this one is an oval. 
Yeah. What are the other signs of a uh, Matara? Oh, um, it's interesting because here with a basket prune, you don't see it, but it you can see it likes to grow very upright. It used to be called upright burgundy back in the day. Um, and also very classically has very gray white backs to the leaves. So it tends to actually really stick out. It's actually a pretty easy one to identify all in all, because it really looks quite different than other, other varieties. Um, like for instance, carrying on, which has a much bigger leaf and darker green and more mottled. Um, and the berry texture is totally different too. Mataro is tricky to pick because, or pick, <clears throat> tricky to decide when to pick because so much of the um, flavor and aromatics are bound in the skins. Like with Zinfandel um, or Carignan or Grenache, eh, not so much Grenache, but Zinfandel and Carignan and others, you can just taste the fruit and you can just kind of see exactly what the wine's going to be. Mataro is very tricky. It's much more like Syrah where there's just so much bound up in the skins. It's really hard to actually taste what the complexity level is going to be. So you just kind of learn which sites are good and what kind of works. Um, so just because so much is bound up and this wine is always insanely aromatic and spicy and earthy and funky and it's got all like the cool feral uh, wildness of, of Morved, which is really um, which is really nice. But you don't only really taste that. <laughs> you just kind of know what it is after after it ferments. So this is like it's a, just like an acid and it reacts with the cal calcium carbonate and breaks it down. Or if, if you do have calcium carbonate, it breaks it down and it fizzes because it releases like air. But so if it doesn't fizz, then it is not limestone. So this is not limestone. So this is not limestone. You're saying it here. <laughs> I'm saying with pretty, pretty good uh, confidence that it's not limestone. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So not as exciting as if we did find limestone, but... Now you gotta break the news to everyone. It's not limestone. It's not? Do you want to talk about quartz veins? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a cool one. It is a cool one. I love veins. Yeah. So, I mean, this to me looks like it could be more, like, um, metamorphic. It's, it has to be somewhat metamorphic because the pressure is basically what happens. It's yeah. like it pushes it and different materials have different... Um, but you can see it looks different Pre than the not granite. Pressure, but pressure differentials, I guess, and so they'll like come together. Yeah. Within it. It looks different than the granite because you can't the the different minerals aren't as like you said, they're not as visible. Like and you can kind of see like a lining in there. So that would yeah. maybe say like maybe be pretty good chance yeah. that there's some pressure involved. But so, then the quartz veins that are running through are all happened after this actual rock was formed. So the they had some sort of tectonic fracture and then that got filled with um, yeah. solution or, or then... pressure event and it just pressed and all of the quartz basically like oh yeah it'll rocks will like reform themselves and like go into different like pressure areas and okay, and they, they'll, they'll want to be together i don't know how to put it better <laughs> yeah but yeah i think yeah. you're probably right did you uh test the uh limestone? yeah it's not limestone <laughs> oh it's all right we'll find it that's it we're driving to Brosseau to get it <laughs>